Metadrine is a medication that is used to reduce fainting. It is one of the selective alpha-1 adrenergic agonists. It can be used for the treatment of orthostatic hypotension. Orthostatic hypotension is one reason for a drop in your blood pressure, particularly when you stand up from a sitting position or lying position. It is also called postural hypotension, as the drop in the blood pressure can be observed when you change your posture. People may have lightheadedness, dizziness, blurred vision, and weakness. It can also result in fainting due to a drop in blood pressure. Midodrine is useful and relieves the symptoms of orthostatic hypotension. It increases your blood pressure, therefore, it restores the hypotensive response. Midodrine is also used in other conditions like vasovagal syncope. It is a neurally mediated reflex disorder. It involves the abnormal autonomic response to a few triggers. It is also called neurocardiogenic syncope. It is one common type of fainting that is caused by overreaction towards the triggers that produce a sudden drop in your heart rate and blood pressure. In this condition, the blood flow to your brain is reduced, which results in the loss of consciousness. Even though it is harmless and does not need any special treatment, a sudden fall can produce significant injuries. It results in the venous pooling in the lower extremities, reducing the venous return and cardiac preload. When this cardiac preload is reduced, mechanoreceptors in the left ventricle sense the situation. This stimulates the vigorous ventricular contractions. However, this can trigger a paradoxical reflex mechanism. It increases the vagal tone, resulting in a bradycardia to reduce the heart rate. It also reduces the sympathetic tone, leading to vasodilation. So this results in a hypotension and bradycardia. Even it brings the cerebral hypoperfusion, leading to syncope. Emotionally stressful conditions like fear, phobia, and pain can also produce syncope. This may also be triggered by a few other situations, like prolonged standing, especially in hot environments. This results in severe dehydration, which may also trigger syncope. Few people may observe vasovagal syncope after strenuous exercise. This is because of loss of body fluids during the exercise, resulting in dehydration. However, it can also be stimulated by many other factors, like the sight of blood or sudden emotional distress. This stimulus causes the heart rate and blood pressure to drop rapidly, leading to a fainting response. Midodrine can help prevent a sudden drop in your blood pressure that often leads to fainting. Vasovagal syncope involves the nervous system, especially the vagus nerve. Vagus nerves play a key role in the vasovagal response that involves a sudden drop in your heart rate and blood pressure. This vagus nerve overreacts to a trigger, leading to a drop in your heart rate and blood pressure. However, this loss of consciousness is usually for a short period, and it only lasts for a few seconds to minutes. People may recover quickly from this loss of consciousness. Few people may get this fainting on seeing the sight of blood. Few people may experience warning signs before the fainting. They may feel dizzy and lightheaded. They become pale, and it can even induce a feeling of nausea. Excessive sweating can also be observed. Midodrine is approved to manage this vasovagal syncope by increasing supine blood pressure. How does it work? Midodrine is one of the medications that is used to treat vasovagal syncope. It is one of the alpha-1 selective adrenergic agonists. It increases the peripheral vascular resistance. It activates the alpha-1 adrenergic receptors that are located on the blood vessels. When these receptors are activated, it increases the vasoconstriction. This increases peripheral vascular resistance. Therefore, you can observe increased arterial and venous tone. This results in an increase in the blood pressure. Normally, this raise in the blood pressure is required when you're going to change your posture. Therefore, midodrine can help when you rise from a sitting, standing, or supine position. Your systolic and diastolic blood pressures are increased to counteract orthostatic hypotension. Dosage and Administration Midodrine has high bioavailability. Around 93% of the medication is absorbed into your body, and it has the onset of action within 45 to 90 minutes. However, it has a short duration of action. It can work up to 2 to 3 hours. Midodrine is extensively metabolized in the liver. It is a prodrug that is going to be converted into this desclimidodrine, which is an active metabolite that is responsible for its vasoconstrictory actions. This active metabolite is 15 times more potent than the midodrine, therefore, it is primarily responsible for the treatment of vasovagal syncope. This medication is rapidly absorbed, and it is reaching its peak plasma levels within half an hour. But it has a short half-life of around 25 minutes, 
as this medication is going to be converted into its active metabolite. The half-life of this active metabolite is around 3 to 4 hours. The absolute bioavailability of mitodrine is 93%, which is measured in terms of its active metabolite. So it has good bioavailability. The absorption of this medication is not affected by the food. So you can take this medication either with or without food. Mitodrine is available as tablets at strengths of 2.5 mg, 5 mg, and 10 mg for symptomatic orthostatic hypotension. It can be started at a dose of 2.5 to 10 mg given 3 times a day. The usual dose is 10 mg given 3 times a day. However, doses greater than 30 mg per day may not be effective. For stress incontinence, mitodrine can be used off-label. It can be given at a dose range of 2.5 to 5 mg. Based on a requirement, it can be given either twice or thrice daily. In people with renal impairment, the dose is decreased to 2.5 mg. Mitodrine is recommended at a dose of 10 mg three times daily during the daytime hours when the people are in the upright position and doing their daytime activities. With each dosing, at least a four-hour gap should be there. It can be taken in the morning, midday, and late afternoon. However, it is not recommended after 6 p.m. to avoid nighttime supine hypertension. If symptoms are to be controlled more frequently, it can be given at three-hour intervals. In order to avoid soap and hypertension, it should not be given after the evening meal or for less than four hours before bedtime. Mitodrine should be continued only in the people who observe symptomatic improvement with initial treatment. This can save the significant side effect produced by this medication. Now let us discuss the precautions of this medication. Mitodrine can slow your heart rate because of its action on the vagal reflex. Therefore, while you're going to take other medications that again produce a slowing of your heart rate, the effect may be enhanced. Particularly, it can be pronounced when you're taking the drugs that produce a negative chronotropic effect. These are the medications that reduce your heart rate and induce the symptoms of bradycardia. You should be very careful with medications like digoxin. It is used in the treatment of congestive heart failure. It can increase the force of contraction of the heart, but at the same time, it can reduce the cardiac conduction. Particularly, it can reduce the atrioventricular conduction. Therefore, it can produce a slowing of your heart rate. So when you are taking the mitodrine along with the digoxin, you can observe a significant bradycardia. Similarly, beta blockers like propranolol or selective beta blockers like metaprolol can also reduce your heart rate as well as the force of contraction. These medications are going to block the adrenergic receptors directly on your heart. Thereby, they reduce cardiac contractility. That's why when you're using the beta blockers, you can observe a slowing of your heart rate and a decrease in your pulse rate. So, along with such drugs, again, mitodrine can produce significant bradycardia. Therefore, when you are using these medications, you should closely monitor the symptoms of bradycardia. Mitodrine is particularly used for symptomatic orthostatic hypotension. This medication can produce a marked elevation in the supine blood pressure. The blood pressure may be increased to 200 millimeters of systolic blood pressure. Therefore, it should be used in patients whose lives are impaired even after the clinical care and non-pharmacological treatments and lifestyle alterations. Sleeping with the head of the bed elevated can induce a supine position. The patient should notice the symptoms of supine hypertension, like pounding in the ears, headache, blurred vision, and cardiac discomfort. In case of the development of these symptoms, this medication is discontinued. Because of the risk of supine hypertension, mitodrine should not be given with other agents that increase the blood pressure. Particularly, phenylephrine is one of the alpha-1 adrenergic agonists, which is used to produce nasal decongestion. So this medication can be used in a few of the cough syrups as a nasal decongestant. Pseudoephedrine is another medication that is also working in a similar way. So when these medications are taken along with imidadrine, they may produce significant hypertension. The excessive levels of thyroid hormones can produce an elevation in your blood pressure. Therefore, in people with elevated levels of thyroid hormones or people who are using the thyroid hormone supplements, the risk of elevation of blood pressure may be increased while taking mitodrine. Mitodrine should be carefully used in people with urinary retention problems. This medication is a prodrug, and it is converted into its active metabolite. This active metabolite acts as an alpha-1 adrenergic receptor located on the bladder. It produces bladder constriction and increases urinary urgency. However, the urethral pathway is narrowed, leading to urinary retention. 
Midodrine should be carefully used in people with any visual problems because this medication may increase the risk of intraocular pressure and may induce glaucoma. Similarly, in the diabetic people, this medication should be used carefully. In case of any renal impairment, midodrine should be used at a low dose because the safety of this medication is not established completely in people with renal impairment. The active metabolite of this medication is mainly eliminated through the kidneys. Therefore, in people with reduced renal function, the active metabolite may be more accumulated in the body, which can produce variable effects on the raising blood pressure. Therefore, in people with renal impairment, it should be used at a starting dose of 2.5 milligrams. The renal function should be properly assessed before the start of this therapy. Over-the-counter products and cold remedies can elevate your blood pressure, so you should be careful to check any other medications that interact with this midodrine. To avoid the nighttime supine hypertension, midodrine should be taken three to four hours before bedtime. You should avoid the MAO inhibitors and linozolid while taking this medication. Fludrocortisone is one of the corticosteroids that has mineralocorticoid activity, so it produces salt retention in the body. So this may increase the supine hypertension. Therefore, in the presence of midodrine, the dose of fludrocortisone should be reduced. Even the salt intake should be reduced with the use of this medication. Alpha-1 blockers like prozacine, terazosin, and doxazosin are used to treat benign prostatic hyperplasia in people with prostate enlargement. They block the alpha-1 receptors at the bladder neck and increase the urinary flow. When they are taken with midodrine, they can antagonize its effect. Contraindications This medication should be avoided in people with severe heart disease, urinary retention, pheochromocytoma, and thyrotoxicosis. In people with thyrotoxicosis, because of elevated levels of thyroid hormones, using midodrine can increase the risk of significant blood pressure. Therefore, in people with thyrotoxicosis, this should be avoided. Pheochromocytoma is a rare adrenal tumor, which is associated with increased release of mediators like adrenaline and noradrenaline. Therefore, the blood pressure is excessively elevated in people with pheochromocytoma. Use of midodrine is contraindicated in such people due to the risk of hypertensive crisis. In people with urinary retention, use of midodrine is not recommended. Now let us see the side effects of midodrine. One of the serious adverse reactions is the elevation in the supine arterial blood pressure. This may result in supine hypertension. The systolic blood pressure may reach 200 millimeters with 10 milligrams of midodrine. However, these systolic elevations are observed particularly in the people with elevated systolic blood pressures before the treatment. Therefore, while taking this medication, the supine and sitting hypertension should be closely monitored. It can also produce a few other side effects, like paresthesia leading to loss of sensations. It can also produce itching and pruritus on the scalp. Goosebumps can be observed with the use of this medication due to piloerection. You may have urinary urgency and pain during urination. It can also increase urinary retention and urinary frequency. It can also produce chills, abdominal pain, and rashes. Rarely, it can produce anxiety, confusion, and dizziness. That's all about midodrine used to prevent fainting and orthostatic hypotension and vasovagal syncope. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe and hit the like button if you really like this video. Share this video with your friends to support our work. Stay tuned. See you in the next video.